Welcome back. You're listening to Vibrant Living with Bayou Yoga. I'm Wendy Hassenfluke. And I'm Shannon levy Heath. And this is your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Today we're talking about how to move from positive thinking to enriching actions in your life. And I want to just pause on our topic for a sec to wish my co-host a very happy oh, birthday today because it's you. her birthday. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> okay, so we'll go back to what we were talking about because that was positive thinking and action right there in action. Yeah. <laughs> and I thank you for that. <laughs> so our guest today is the wonderful, talented Jill Tupper. She is a, a renowned keynote speaker and health and, or sorry, not health, wellness and, and life um, expert. And she is... She sharing some information that about some of her retreats that she does and the work that she does in helping people with life and wellness. Jill, I want to just ask you, or, or we would like to, I think we both have yes. some questions ab- about some of your, the things that you've done. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about Kilimanjaro? Because uh, inquiring minds just want to know. Oh, <laughs> well, I think it's a really great example of when we get inspired I had this inspiration um, that I wanted at some point in my life to climb Kilimanjaro. It was the same type of thing that I had an inspiration that one point in my life I wanted to go to Russia. I didn't necessarily know why, but I had these inklings that this was on my list. And so um, I also had an inkling I wanted to run a marathon. And so what I did is with Kilimanjaro, I found a picture and I just put it up in front of my office on my desk where I could see it consistently and actually I did it with each of these things. And it was just one of these burning desires. Even as a child, I've always wanted to travel the world. And um, so I pulled together a group of people and we spent time uh, not only climbing Kilimanjaro, but we worked alongside of Mother Teresa's Missionaries of Charity in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So my goal was to design a trip that was both mission and wilderness. Why both together? Because for me, those both of those experiences, you're completely stripped of kind of that um, facade. It gets down to the heart of the matter, and it's a transformative, life-changing experience when you encounter the wilderness and when you're climbing to 19,600 feet, <laughs> which wow. is not an easy thing to do, uh, or when you're serving the most impoverished people, you might ever have the privilege of... Um, having moments with in um, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So that's where patients were dying of AIDS. Oh, my. What an amazing journey. And that's only part of what you've done in your life. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's, it's really what um, propels me forward. I think when we often go on experiences like this, uh, we think we're going to give all these great things to others. And we, in turn, are completely and utterly transformed in the process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, that actually leads us right into my next question for you, because clearly positive thinking is one of the many tools that you possess to help reach your goals and and visualizing and, and, you know, just what you spoke about. But when you combine positive thinking with positive action, then you're going to be more likely to get the positive results that you're looking for, right? So another retreat that you focus on is called Cleanse the Clutter Body Mind Closet. And this is pretty appropriate for spring cleaning and all the cleansing we've been talking about in our yoga classes this month. So how could cleansing the clutter in our lives, Jill, help us move into enriching actions? Oh, I think this is really key. Um, I do a talk called called, um, Spring Cleanse Body Mind Closet. And why do I connect all of those? And I know you know why as well, but we start with the closet. We start with the outer space. And usually there are pockets of clutter in our lives, whether it's a kitchen drawer or a desk drawer or a closet or a bedroom or something where things are piled up and that creates an energy block, a real sense of things are stuck and energy needs to flow through there. So often when we begin to free up the outer space, that then in turn begins to open up greater mental and energy space so then we can work on ourselves. And when we clear the clutter from our own physical bodies by doing cleanses, and I've done all kinds of cleanses, um, and I've learned the hard way on which ones I think are the most life-giving, but a really solid nutritional cleanse, um, Wendy, that you and I have utilized has been 
phenomenal, by far the best of anything I've utilized. And when I do that, then there's greater clarity that comes to the body. At the same time, learning to cleanse the mind. You know, are you eating problems for breakfast, worries Mm -hmm. for lunch, Uh and snacking on stress? You know, are these the kinds of things that you're really nourishing your mind with? Well, it's depleting. It's it's, uh, toxic. And so we want to cleanse the mind of negative thoughts that um, really take us anywhere but the direction in which we want to go. So when you wake up to what you're feeding your mind, what you're feeding your body, and the clutter that you might be allowing to surround yourself with when you go through those cleansing areas, you cannot help but free up just tremendous energy to absolutely then often even leap forward, not just take inspired action, leap into inspired action. <laughs> nice. I see the visual. <laughs> As yeah, dancers, exactly. we both so, see that yeah. visual. <laughs> so truly, it's a releasing of stagnation in every area of your life to inla- allow greater positivity. I, it really is, and it's a domino effect. I think sometimes when we feel overwhelmed, if you can just go to that one drawer or that one closet or that desk or that stack of papers and, you know, allow yourself, give yourself the strength to move through that, then it begins to open and the domino effect, the energy is released, the clutter is released, you go to the body, you go to the mind, and you, as you continue this cycle, you stay less and less stagnant and more and more in building life-giving momentum. Nice. Yeah, I want to touch back on what you were talking about and the mind cleanse part of it, because what I have found in my own work is that, you know, there's such thing as positive thinking and and visualization and working towards what you really want to attract into your life. But at the same time, there are also the thoughts that come up that are not taking us in that direction. And it's what we do with those thoughts. And if we just suppress them, meaning that we go, I don't want to think that I need to stop thinking that stop thinking that but you're still bringing it into your you're, you know, you're still attracting it if you're, if you're suppressing it as well. So, you know, how, how do you address the mind part of it when, when, you know, when, when we are suppressing those thoughts and we're trying to replace them with where we really want to be? Well, I think the real key word you're using there, Wendy, is suppressing. Suppressing will not work. You know, when you suppress, you eventually depress. There's no way that those don't go together. So it's acknowledging, recognizing whatever those thoughts or feelings might be, honoring them, and then not allowing them to overtake. So I often teach people in my coaching practice how to begin to coach yourself. So if you can extend the kindness, you know, the validation, of course you're feeling a little nutty, you know, of course that doesn't feel good, that was difficult for you. And I understand that. So extend some understanding, some compassion to yourself. And then you simply, usually that will give enough space that it can relax and say, okay, then you heard me. And you heard that, you know, I'm over here kind of freaking out. You gave me some attention. And now you're going to choose to put your attention on the forward movement that is the most life-giving, the thoughts that really replenish. So I think it's acceptance. I think it's loving kindness. I think it's compassion. And then I think it's saying, okay, I've given that enough time, and now I'm going to move forward, and I'm choosing these life-giving beliefs. And for me, it's like lifting weights. If you, um, It's not easy, and you have to get in the habit of it, and you need to continue to practice it so that you can begin to replace those thoughts that have kind of pulled you down in a negative way and with the life-giving thoughts that are going to elevate you, Mm -hmm. your energy, your forward movement. And what I have found when you talk about, you know, strength training, I I think about mountain biking because that's that's my latest addiction. I mean, hobby. Right. And, (laughs) And for me, you know, when I first started, I couldn't even, honestly, the first time I got on my husband's bike years ago, I fell over in the front yard and I quickly got up and I was like, okay, nobody saw me. Cool. I don't think I'm going to get on that for a while. But, you know, that was a few years ago. But I I now, you know, I, I ride the trails that are out here. And when I used to first start the trails out here, just back in September, I would just do little by little. And the thoughts in my head were, you know, I was scared. I was I was working from fear and your mind would go in a way and you'd say, stop doing that and just stay focused. But then it shifted at some point between last September and now to where that fear has become something that propels me 
into into action into uh, it's I don't know how to explain it but I think it kind of is what you're talking about in a way <laughs> I'm having that same experience with aerial dance I'm thinking you know oh my gosh I, I don't think I can do this and then going no I'm going to I'm just I'm going to keep at it I'm determined and it will happen and then and what does that do for you and then it happens. I, <laughs> I did that thing that I didn't think I could do, and it's kind of brilliant, nice. truly. And I think uh, one of the things Jill said that struck me is the idea of self-compassion. Um, it's very easy to engage in negative self-talk, and you have to begin to notice when you're doing that and take out the word not and find a mm, more yes. positive way and a more self-affirming, life-affirming yes, way to absolutely. present yourself. Nice. Well, we're going to take a break here for uh, the next segment. And when we come back, we're going to share some great tips again on how to move from positive thinking into more enriching actions in our life. And again, you can you can visit us online at vayuyoga.com. And our guest, Jill, actually on Facebook, she's got some wonderful things on Facebook to follow as well. That's Jill Tupper, T-U-P-P-E-R on Facebook. You've been listening to Vibrant Living with Vayu Yoga. We'll be right back. This is your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to Vibrant Living with Bayou Yoga. I'm Wendy Hassenfluke. And I'm Shannon Levy-Heath. And this is your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Today we're talking about how to move from positive thinking to enriching, enriching actions and back and forth because they do kind of create this cycle. You have to continually have the positive thinking and then let that inspire you and move you to enriching actions and then you repeat that process. A, a quote by Mae West is kind of what I'm talking about. An ounce of performance is worth pounds of promises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to move into my next question for our wonderful guest today, Jill Tupper, who is a, a keynote speaker and a life and wellness expert. B.L. Fredrickson's Broaden and Build Theory of Positive Emotions states that people's daily experiences of positive emotions compound over time to build a variety of consequential personal resources. And this is pretty much what we've already been talking about, but there's actually a study, of course. There's quite a few studies. Jill, can you elaborate on your idea of how the secret to unlocking your inner genius lies within your ability to access your mind-body connection? You know, I really can. Um, when I believe we change our bodies, we change our minds, we really do ultimately change our lives. And what I think people are coming to note, and obviously you all know so well, is that there is no separation really between our mind and our body. You know, it's, it's so interconnected. Our thoughts are reflected in our physiology and the very aspect of what our body can do for us. And you can see that beautifully with a lot of professional athletes or Olympians. Every last one of them visualize mentally them in the game. That is a part of their training, not just physically on the court or on their skis or whatever their sport is. So visualizing mental training is just as important as our physical training. And what I really see happens with a lot of us is, for those of us who are going to the gym and working out, we will go work out our physical bodies, but then we allow our minds. And I just did a video blog on this uh, a week ago or so on the beach, and I talk about the fact that we find ourselves actually draining our very performance because while we're physically working out our bodies, we allow our minds to go down the rabbit hole into negative spiral and we can actually sabotage of an incredible physical workout by draining ourselves mentally. So we've got to wake up that we've got to be fueling the mind as we fuel the body to move forward on a consistent basis. So I'm going to have to listen to, to that for sure. I'll look back at your Facebook page and, and listen to that. But I, I guess my question is, because I noticed the same thing, Jill, is, is you know, I was a, a personal trainer and fitness manager before I opened my yoga studio. And... Uh, it does seem like, at least nowadays, I don't know if it was necessarily the case, you know, back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, but nowadays, you know, the first thing you do is you plug in to music or a TV and you get on your treadmill or the bike and whatever that might be, and there's a total disconnect between the mind and body once you do that. 
That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. There's a disconnect. The body's doing one thing, but the mind is somewhere completely different. So what's your suggestion if it's not an outdoor thing? Because I think that's probably why I like mountain biking, because I don't put anything on my ears. I like to hear what's going around and be connected to everything around me, especially during rattlesnake, rattlesnake season. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what's your suggestion for, you know, when you are at the gym and, and how do you keep that mind-body connection? Well, that's actually one of the things I'm wanting to design is, um, is to create something that will actually do that for people. But I'm very, very careful. What I will put in are inspirational speakers like Les Brown, Mm-hmm. or Tony Robbins, and I will wire in. If I'm not outside, which is always my top preference, um, I will put in the life-giving thoughts and practice those. And there's some great inspirational videos that you can watch. Find one or two that really resonate with you, and then continue to put that in and digest that while you're working out. I think that that's a really key thing so that you feel those positive that positive energy resonating in and through the body. So what I find when I work out is that at first you're working out, you're kind of unfurling and the mind is starting to relax a bit, and that's all good because I think the breath is beginning to open, the body's beginning to open in the body, and the mind starts coming into sync. Then as soon as you relax the mind, the huge list appears, and that list mm-hmm. is just ginormous. You know, it's crazy long. And it completely engulfs you, and then you're back into a mental state of complete overwhelm. Then if you can wake up to that and realize that's what your mind is doing, you release the list, okay, because it's typically very repetitive. Then you can go back into the breath, back into the positive mantra or thoughts that you're practicing. So mantras are very good to take in at the same time. And then... What happens is we begin to relax again, get down to the body and the mind coming back into sync. And then if we're not careful, we're going to get really right back sucked into whatever negative experience has not worked out well. Not all the thousands of positives we've been surrounded with, (laughs) Mm, but those few negatives that somehow just triggered us at a deeper level. And if you've already replayed it and reflected and learned what you need to, Then you consciously choose again, breathe that away, move back to the body, the mind, and envision yourself lifting your mantras like you would your weights. So go to a mantra, go to a positive music that the words are going to land with you, a positive video, a speaker, anything that resonates with your spirit. So you're feeding the spirit as you're opening the body, taking in all of that, and then you're shifting the mind-body connection to a greater place of strength. And I like the idea of breathing it, breathing oh, the positivity. Absolutely. I also visually saw my weights with, with my mantras actually written on my weights when you said that. Oh, <laughs> oh I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it'd have to be short mantras, image, but you could have a whole, you know, weight, a whole shelf of weights with you. <laughs> it's true. And what I think we need to understand, to be honest, Wendy, is that, and Shannon, is that when we start to lift the positive thoughts, they don't feel so heavy. But then when we need to repetitively do it and gain strength from it, it feels heavier. It takes more willpower to choose the positive thoughts than it does to go back to the old negative ways of thinking. Mm. So if we don't recognize that, we can kind of just stay with five pounders and then, you know, we've outgrown them. So we need to recognize is when we really want something to solidify in our lives, you have to keep building the mind muscle memory and you're creating the new pattern, the Mm -hmm. new beginning for your life. And and not just, um, oh, I just completely lost track what I was just going to say. Wow, that was really trippy. It was like this, (laughs) this bird just flew into the studio and caught my attention and it was something shiny. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Lost it. Don't know what I was going to say. Oh, you're fine, but I do think that's where we get we get caught thinking it's going to get easy at some point, mm, yes. and we can get a little bit lazy in our minds, and the truth is the mind is the most challenging part to train. It's much more challenging to train our minds than it is our bodies. Truly, and I, and but the cool thing about that, that's I just, I just remembered, the bird flew away. So <laughs> when yep. you have done the necessary work and 
it has happened consistently and consciously enough, then it becomes second nature and habit to where you're not, it, it, it's not taking work anymore. It's already there. It's a part of you. And it's built your momentum, and it's difficult for you to see any situation apart from the positive lens. Yes, yes. Correct, exactly. So, so it's truly creating an, a kind of a muscle memory for the yeah. mind. It is. Mm, love that. But we begin to think about it in terms of training. That's where I work on so much with my clients and in speaking is I just need to say it is a training. It's not just, oh, yeah, I need to remember to think positive thoughts. You need to go in and seriously train the brain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And where do you hold your retreats, Jill? Well, I don't have any scheduled at this point. I'm doing a lot more over the phone and keynotes at this okay. point. Um, but we are looking to do one in the fall and hopefully in Colorado. That's but I also so have a group that really wants me to take a group to Machu Picchu, which has been on the list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. I'd like to be so in that group. So have people just connect with the page. Yes. And you'll find out what our next soulful adventure is going to be. Right. So if you're just tuning in, that's Jill Tupper and her, her Facebook page, T-U-P-P-E-R, um, to, to find out more about where her upcoming events are. And speaking of upcoming events, before we go to break here, I'm actually hosting a special benefit this Saturday, April 18th, for local Santa Clarita Valley resident, Leslie Caldonarello. Her We're raising money for her, her young granddaughter to help find a diagnosis. And the event is actually a hike and yoga. So I'm going to actually be leading us through a hike in Placerita Nature Center. And about every 20 minutes, we're going to do about a 15-minute yoga and then hike some more and yoga. It's from 8 to 10 a.m. this Saturday. You can learn more at my website, vayuyoga.com. You've been listening to Vibrant Living with Vayu Yoga on your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS.